Hello comrades, you watching Red Ivan Airsoft and today we'll compare summer field uniform sets of Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and USA. Russian summer suit from the VKPO set in EMR summer camouflage pattern. It was developed since 2011. The first batch went to the troops in 2013. Since 2016, it is the main summer field uniform set of the Russian armed forces. In 2018, it underwent a number of simplifications. My set was produced in 2020. Field uniform set of the US Army. In the United States, each branch of the military can have its own uniforms and camouflage, and we'll discuss specifically the camouflage and cut of the US Army. This camouflage was designed in 2009 and is called Scorpion W2 or OCP, Operational Camouflage Pattern. Uniform's cut is updated ACU, Army Combat Uniform. But soldiers often call it OCP, because why would you memorize three additional letters? This uniform began to be issued to military personnel in the combat zones from 2014 and to the rest of the troops from 2015. My jacket is produced in 2015 and trousers in 2017. Field uniform of the armed forces of Ukraine. This camouflage is called MM14 and we already discussed its history in my other video. Uniform cut was designed in 2015. In 2019 there were complaints about the reduction of the dressing pocket size on the trousers and other little things and it is not clear whether these changes were official or someone just decided to save some money. My set was produced in 2018. The field uniform of the Belarusian Armed Forces, model of 2019. It is the most recently modified sample in our today's selection. Made in Belarusian digital camouflage, which is often confused with Russian EMR summer. But these patterns are different. My set was produced in 2020. If you want to see a complete overview of the specific set, on this channel we already have a video about Ukrainian uniforms and Russian uniforms. At some point I will also make a video about Belarusian uniform and the uniform of the US Army. Today we will compare the cut of all four sets by elements and then we will discuss the fabric and the camouflage. Heads US Army Patrol Cap It is made in ACU cut and OCP camouflage. We need to notice that in the field and during the deployment US Army personnel more often uses the boonie heads, and these boonie heads are made of flame resistant materials, while I never saw the Fraco patrol cap. Basically similar caps have been used in the United States Armored Forces since around World War II. They were issued with M43 uniforms, battle dress uniforms and later with ACU. ACU variant also has a velcro panel for the name tape on the back. Now I need to point that unfortunately I do not have latest Russian and Ukrainian patrol caps. The thing is that once Russia and Ukraine moved away from the Soviet legacy, they adopted this nice, minimalistic and very practical BDU style caps. But then Russia adopted something that reminds me the head of the gendarmes from the old French comedy with Louis de Finesse, or something North Korean. And Ukraine adopted so-called Mazepenka cap, which is based on the hat worn by Sech Rifleman. Sech Rifleman was an ethnical Ukrainian unit of the Austro-Hungarian army during the World War I, and their hat itself was based on the traditional Cossack's hat and Austrian army hat. So besides Cossack references, Mazepenka has features of German or Austrian army hat. In my opinion, in the field all the spinning, bows, wreaths are as absurd as the German airfields in the front. And in this regard I was pleasantly surprised by the Belarusia, which left the idiotic cone-shaped cap in favor of this practical BDU style cap with velcro adjustment on the back. But again, uh, the lack of the latest Russian and Ukrainian patrol cap won't affect our comparison, as functionally they are still standard caps with visors and uh, some national decorations added to them, with no effect to the functionality. Now let's discuss jackets. American and Ukrainian jackets have classic color, while Russian and Belarusian jackets have stand color with velcro closure. On the Russian color there is also a velcro panel for the buttonholes. The American jacket fastens with zipper and velcro, like Russian and like Ukrainian. Belarusian jacket has Canadian buttons. The rungs on the American jacket are placed on the velcro panel in the center of the jacket, as on Ukrainian jacket. On the Belarusian and Russian jackets, the ranks are located on the shoulders. Belarusians have button-down straps, while Russians have velcro straps. 
I am still wondering why Russian armed forces moved back to the ranks on the shoulders, as there was an idea to place ranks on the chest and on the sleeve in 2010. Pockets. On all four jackets there are two external pockets on the chest, but in completely different format. The ECU has slanted pockets with velcro flaps, in my opinion they are not very comfortable. Velcro is sewn along the entire pocket, so that it opens with effort. The pocket itself is small, and access in body armor is impossible. The most convenient pockets are those on the Ukrainian uniform. These pockets with horizontal through access are closed with zipper on one side and velcro on the other side. Access is convenient wearing body armor and the load bearing system. The volume of these pockets is twice as large as of the American. The pockets on the Russian jacket are traditional with vertical access. These are not convenient to use wearing the body armor, but at least practically possible. The size is medium. On the left pocket there is a loop for the company Man on Duty badge. Belarusian jacket features two slash pockets on the chest with zipper closure. This zipper causes less confidence than the Ukrainian one. The pocket's volume is similar to American. Above the chest pockets of all jackets except Belarusian, there are velcro panels for the name tape and the army tape. Belarusians must sew them on by hands. Inside pockets. There are no inside pockets on the American jacket. The Ukrainian jacket has one regular inside pocket on the left side without a flap and closed with velcro. On the Russian jacket there is one waterproof pocket with a flap on the left inner side closed with velcro. And now just look at the inside pockets of the Belarusian uniform. There are two inside pockets on each side of the jacket. The far one is a cotton pocket with no flap and the near one is a waterproof pocket which closes with velcro by folding the neck. This is a very reliable solution. Perfect for storing secret documents, especially maps. Sleeve pockets. There is a full-size velcro panel for insignia on the sleeve pocket of the American jacket. Above this pocket there is an infrared reflector hidden under the strap. Access to the sleeve pocket is horizontal with zipper. The sleeve pocket on the Ukrainian jacket is also with horizontal access with zipper. And it also features velcro panel for insignia. But firstly, sleeve pocket on the Ukrainian jacket is a slash pocket, which means that it won't snag on the strap of the backpack, unlike the American patch pocket. Secondly, the velcro panel doubles as a convenient pocket for a pen. Russian jacket features slanted sleeve pockets with vertical access, velcro closure, and velcro panels for insignia. Pockets are identical to the early ECU jacket. These pockets are less convenient than the previous models, but quite functional. And there is no need to worry about the broken zipper, nothing will fall out. On the Belarusian uniform there are two slant pockets with poor quality velcro closure. By shape they are similar to Soviet. Not sure if I am out of habit or these pockets are too narrow, but my hand does not fit into them and they are not convenient to use. On the American jacket there is no armpit ventilation. On the Ukrainian jacket there are two small openings. But on the Russian and Belarusian jackets there is a mesh insert. All four jackets have elbow reinforcements. But only Ukrainian jacket has openings for the elbow pads. Russian and Ukrainian jackets have velcro cuffs. American and Belarusian jackets feature cuffs with buttons. But if on American jacket the buttons are fastened inwards so they won't snag on the equipment. On Belarusian the cuffs buttoned outwards. On the lower part of the sleeve of the American jacket there is a panel for a pen. All four jackets have a fold on the back to increase the freedom of movement. Trousers. But before we start talking about the pants, we need to clarify a few things related to the size. My haze is 5'11", which is 180 cm, and the weight is approximately 70 kg. And from the age of 14, I am wearing the Soviet size 48 4 and in American system I am somewhere in between small regular and medium regular. Uh, small regular pants from both Vietnam era tropical combat uniform and battle dress uniform M81 uh, fit me perfectly. But the ECU pants do not. They fit me perfectly in the waist and the length, but they press terribly in the groin. Probably Americans decided that in the army only girls can be that thin. Same problem arose with Ukrainian trousers, so I obtained these two in bigger sizes, so I can wear Soviet 48.4. Russian, Belarusian, but not Ukrainian. And I consider it to be the cut issue. Because if something don't fit you completely, it is a one thing. But uh, if it fits your measurements everywhere except one, the most important area, it is a cut issue. 
the fly on the American and Belarusian trousers is fastened with buttons, and on Russian and Ukrainian ones with a zipper and one button on top. Here I trust the American decision more, as Americans have been experimenting with a zipper fly since the days of the Vietnam War. And if the army with the best logistics in the world and significant combat experience has returned to the buttons, then there was a reason for this. All trousers have front welt pockets and the Belarusian are the deepest. There are no waist adjustment drawstrings on the American trousers. All servicemen are issued with the belt. On Ukrainian there are straps with velcro. Russian trousers have adjustment system on the inner side. Belarusian pants have sewn in elastic band. The belt loops on the Belarusian and Russian trousers are double for the Soviet trousers belt and the officer's belt. American and Ukrainian trousers have single belt loops. Side cargo pockets. American and Russian trousers feature BDU style side cargo pockets. American clothes with buttons and Russian with velcro. On the Ukrainian trousers there is a BDU style pocket, but the front part of the flap is sewn on, while the back part has a velcro closure. This is done so that even if the velcro deteriorates, the content of the pocket won't fall out. Judging by the fact that on the earlier ECU the side pockets also had velcro closures and later Americans returned to buttons, the problem of the velcro failure is relevant, but I like the Ukrainian solution more. All four samples have knee reinforcements, but only Ukrainian trousers have openings for the knee pads. All samples also have reinforcement of the back part, but only American trousers have back pockets. On American and Ukrainian trousers there is a pocket for the bandage at the bottom of each leg. American pockets have button closure, Ukrainian pockets have velcro closure. Velcro seems to be more convenient, but again on the earlier ACU this pocket had the velcro closure, and there is a reason why it was replaced with buttons. On the Russian Vekapuo there is an opening for the ventilation on the back part of the leg. Russian and Belarusian trousers have drawstrings and straps at the bottom of the leg. American trousers only have drawstrings. On Ukrainian trousers there are velcro straps, as the trousers are fixed over the boots. Fabric. All four samples are made of ripstop fabric. Russian is 65% cotton and 35% polyester. Ukrainian is also 65% cotton and 35% polyester. Belarusian is 50% cotton and 50% polyester. For deployments, US Army troops are getting Fraku, flame resistant army combat uniform, which is 37% Aramid, 32% nylon, 29% cotton, and 2% of antistat. This fabric is very light, durable, flame resistant, and with insect repellent treatment, which makes it the best fabric of our list. To distinguish Fraku from regular army combat uniform, there is a specific square added to the cuff and to the cargo pocket. Now let's discuss camouflages. EMR Summer and Belarusian digital camouflage are basically equivalent. They both work pretty good at the mid ranges. The downside I heard is that at certain distance the pattern merges into a one dark green spot. I didn't have a chance to test it myself, but considering the fact that Russia is changing the camouflage now, it may be true. The performance of the MM14 camouflage was always questionable to me, and before the war I had a chance to discuss it with the veteran of the Kirovograd Spetsnaz, and he said that during the deployment he always tried to get his hands on any NATO camouflage, such as DPM, Multicam, Flectarn, etc., and so when none of them were available, he preferred Gorka over MM14. But on the other hand, I also heard some positive feedback from some other veterans about the MM14. It is clear that within a week on a muddy position, any camouflage will turn into a one gray spot. But here we are trying to compare the effectiveness of the patterns when they are relatively fresh. Moving on to the OCP or Scorpion W2. Like the Multicam, this camo is based on the earlier development of Cry Precision, which was submitted for the military trials back in 2002. Only God knows why the hell it was not adopted back then. Later this issue was fixed. Since 2009 US Army has been issuing multicam to the troops deployed to Afghanistan as Operation Endurance Freedom camouflage pattern. And by 2015 officially adopted Scorpion W2 as operational camouflage pattern. Multicam and OCP are almost the same, at least for the purpose of this video, and essentially is the most versatile and the most common pattern to this date. Cry Precision also developed MTP for British Armed Forces. Different variations of these camouflages, or the camouflages inspired by them, are used by the major powers of the world. 
USA, Great Britain, Germany, Poland, Ukraine and even Russia has begun to switch to this pattern in its VKPO 2.0 and VKPO 3.0. Video about VKPO 3.0 is already available on my friend's channel called Vajenne Abzor. So I guess that the best camouflage pattern of today's comparison is obvious and it is American OCP. So in terms of the pattern and fabric, US is a clear leader. Of course any pattern is getting chosen based on the terrain and according to the task. But considering the fact that almost the whole world has switched to this pattern, it can be said with confidence that OCP will fit most theaters of ground warfare. With the cut, it is more difficult. The cut of the uniform is developed according to the specification and considering the compatibility with other equipment. So for example, the absence of the pockets for built-in knee and elbow pads cannot be considered a minus if the army is only supplied with a standard regular knee pads and elbow pads. In this scenario, these pockets would be just a waste of money and manufacturing time. But subjectively, in terms of number of the interesting solutions and convenience, I consider the cut of the Ukrainian uniform to be the best. Cut of the US suit is on the second place and Russia is on the third place. It is impossible to win the race by copying the outdated solutions of the main rivals. And even worsening them intentionally by adding obsolete solutions like the straps for the ranks on the shoulders. And Belarusia is the last. If you would ask ChatGPT how would the uniform of the non-combatant state, which is trying to visually keep up with the modern trends, but cheaper look like, it will most likely give a description of the Belarusian uniform. Now let's summarize. Having the second most functional cut, but the best fabric and the best camouflage pattern, I would say that the US Army uniform is the best. Clear outsider is the uniform of the Belarusian armed forces. But comparing Russian and Ukrainian uniforms, it is hard for me to tell which one is better. Obviously, Ukraine has a better cut, but the gap is not critical. Fabric is equivalent. In my understanding, the EMR summer camouflage pattern should work slightly better than MM14. But again, these camouflages are not uh, universal, so it is based on the terrain. So you tell me. Leave your comment and let me know who is on the second and who is on the third place. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you liked this video, subscribe to my channel, put like, if you want to help channel financially there are links in the description and see you next time.